The 6.5 is on the road here in San Jose, California. We're at AMD's Advancing AI event. Daniel, the walk-ons from XAI and Sam Altman coming on from OpenAI were incredible. We heard people talking about training where last year was pretty much limited to inference. So what's going on here? Yeah, it was a big, big one. And by the way, I got this great photo of Lisa and Sam hugging on yes. stage. I, I tweeted it or yes. X'd it or whatever we call it these days. One of my big banger posts, I got like five, 600 people have already engaged with this thing. Um, and it seems that everybody was really excited. I said something along the lines of, really feels like an inflection right. in this moment right here. And it was like this really nice embrace. Yeah, and behind all of these incredible innovations is our, our bets that had to be made years ago, five, six years in advance. And one guy that has been consistent uh, in this with his team is AMD CTO, Mark Papermaster. Mark, welcome back to the show. Thanks very much, Pat. Great to be here with you and Daniel. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, it's great to see you. I think uh, last time I heard from you, you were doing a little fireside chat over at Oracle in Austin. That's right. Um, That's right. It was great listening to you. Uh, I was hearing some of the things you were saying that actually some of it was kind of came into fruition today. You're talking about this inference inflection, talking about open source and talking a little bit about uh, you know building software. You were very self-aware about kind of some of the opportunities, challenges that existed around that. And it seems based on the comments, less from what AMD people were saying, and more from what the customers that, Pat, as you mentioned, yeah. were parading out there, um, they're really seeming to make the progress, uh, seeing the progress, making bigger commitments, uh, not just you know going in on AMD for the inference side, but really starting to do it for more training. And, and it seems to be a lot of TAM expansion and opportunities. But let's start off just getting your CTO perspective. Sure. Um, you know, in your role, you're, you're trying to do a lot of things for the company. What is the sort of big takeaways today? And, and like, what are the pro what's the progress you're kind of most proud of at this, at this event? Yeah, Daniel, great question. I mean, it, it, it absolutely um, is an inflection point in the industry, and it's a real inflection point for AMD. And why do I say that? And why, why is today sort of a showcase of that inflection? It goes back to actually what uh, Pat was saying earlier. So think about what the discussion before is. Is AMD real? Okay, they're talking about uh, inference, and, there, and, and of course we did have partners uh, already uh, that were running production inference, but it was the big hyperscalers. It's been the partners yeah. that have been partnering uh, with us uh, to ensure that uh, we knew what the requirements were, we knew where the, what the kind of uh, productivity gains that they needed, and, and frankly, handling their workloads at a, at a production scale. And so today marked a change where uh, it, it's evidence of what we've been doing to expand beyond that handful of customers who were, um, you know, really our early adopters. And so that's what we've done uh, today when we can show that we have, uh, you know, these uh, additional partners who are running, uh, not only inferencing, but starting uh, to expand with us in training. And the other inflection point is really sharing more of the next generation of our roadmap. The takeaway right. you have yep. is that we are, uh, pulled in our MI350 by three months. So we're starting production uh, shipments right away in Q3. Uh, we already have sampling with early customers, and it's designed for much better inferencing. So you can take advantage right. of new approximation modes. You can get up to a, you know, actually above a 35x throughput advantage of inferencing, but now really designed for mid-scale training. And then we unveiled our plans beyond that, uh, not the details yet, uh, but where we're going on our MI. 400 series, which will be the following year, and that is truly des designed for uh, up to, you know, actually large-scale LLM massive clusters uh, for training and inferencing. So very, very exciting on, uh, on where our, our customers have uh, progressed in adopting our roadmap. And the other key takeaway is software. Uh, yeah. So uh, last year, again, lots of questions. Uh, AMD, are, are you real? I see you've got these uh, few hyperscales up and running in production. What about the rest of the world? Yeah. And so it was great uh, to have uh, Vamsi uh, go through and, and really share what we have done to support the community. What are we doing to support developers? Uh, and so several very, very exciting announcements uh, in that uh, domain. And then a third and final takeaway that I want to share is an incredibly clear message about our commitment to an open ecosystem and an open software stack. Look, you know, history has just shown 
that competition is needed. People don't like to be locked in uh, with one provided and, and from, their, uh, from their IT infrastructure solutions. Uh, and the way to, to provide that competition is through uh, partnering as an ecosystem and with open source. Yeah, so last year at your Advancing AI event, uh, you made a ton of progress. Mm -hmm. And the one that really stood out for me was what you did with Rockham. Mm -hmm. And you know, it, over, uh, over a series of years, really turning that from an, a high performance computing solution into an AI solution, that is not, e that is not easy. And what you did with Rockham 7, uh, looking at, at the numbers, is is impressive. I mean, we we talked to Vanush and and just had a great conversation with him. You know, he's doing uh, you know uh, new code uploads every day. Mm -hmm. That's Q8 every week. Uh, that is very very different. Um, it's, it's a very different AMD. Uh, and containers yeah. going out every other week to the to the world. Right. With these updates. Yeah, it's impressive. Um, I want to I want to talk. Uh, you know, it's funny. We were congratulating you on your customer talking more about training, mm -hmm. but uh, it's clear, like we saw seven or eight years ago, uh, the shift in in where the action is. Uh, moving from training to inference, yes. and, and inference is really a, a significant uh, area because it shows that people are actually using AI, mm -hmm. right, as opposed to running, doing training runs uh, on it. Uh, can you talk about um, how you're positioning the portfolio today uh, as as you're getting wider wider deployment here? I mean, we all saw the the giant numbers on inference and the improvement, but maybe you if you can sure. just expand on this a little 80%. bit. 80%? What's that? 80% growth. That's right, 80% growth, it, it's huge. So inferencing uh, is gonna go everywhere. So when you think about inferencing uh, to date, uh, it, it's been inferencing on generally the uh, very large language models. So it's the, the LMs underneath the, the commonly used uh, generative AI applications. And so that's what's, uh, you know, and that's what's driven and will continue to drive our high-end GPU roadmap. So there, we're really excited about this growth because we designed to excel at inference. We right. designed with our uh, techniques using both uh, lateral 2.5D chip connectivity and the only one in high volume production with 3D uh, chip development, that gives us advantages. It gives us advantages to be able to stack more memory. And guess what that means? You can have uh, bigger context windows right. when you're running inferencing. And so uh, that will continue to leverage our roadmap going forward. But the key bet that we made that's now bearing fruit is that we enabled for, uh, inferencing across the entire rest of our portfolio. That's right. And we have the broadest portfolio in the industry. So Let's not forget about CPUs. CPUs, of course, are getting more demand now just because as you're running more GPU inferencing, you're using CPUs uh, to help you uh, uh, process those large context windows. Uh, you're getting agentic AI uh, sending more workload there. Uh, but moreover, CPUs have their own vector engine and you can, you can actually very effectively run AI, and we've improved our AI and our CPUs every cycle. So enterprise is running small language models, right. uh, which are now starting to, to create more bespoke tasks that they're trying to accelerate, and they're fine-tuning small language models. Many of them run on the infrastructure they already have. Sure. And if you look at our fifth gen Epic, I mean, it, it, it does very, very well. Uh, and then, then across the board, uh, you know, with our, uh, our AI PCs, our embedded uh, and adaptive compute, uh, we've, we've enabled uh, inference acceleration. So we think we're very well positioned for what we're now at, at just the, the cusp yeah. of a massive inflection. Yeah, I, I like to use the analogy that the pre-training era was kind of like the R&D of the industry. Mm -hmm. And now we're in the monetization, and inference is all about the monetization where people are going to make money from AI. I think that's right, um, and, then, and then driving uh, tremendous productivity improvements. Absolutely, and you know, I always I like to say prune to grow, Mark. You know, we're seeing a lot of efficiencies first, and then we're going to I think start to see that up and to the right in terms of productivity. Um, hyperscalers are all over the stage, uh, clearly very committed. Um, but one of the things that's interesting is, and this has been something that's been pretty consistent with AMD, you've done really well with hyperscalers. You've done really well on the CPU. Mm -hmm. you're, you're starting to do very well with Instinct in that particular space. Some of the market might challenge and say, do better with the enterprises, or sure. for instance. And we heard a lot of indications here 
that uh, you, you've got a path to the enterprise. You had Red Hat on stage talking yes. a little bit about that, BLLM, some of the things. Like, talk a little bit about what you've learned in terms of gaining that market share with the hyperscalers and how you might be able to take this on to this next more commercial enterprise AI opportunity. Yeah, it's a great question. And Daniel, we had to go in the order we did of getting the hyperscalers on board first, or frankly, we wouldn't have had the credibility yeah. Uh, with, with enterprise. And enterprise, even today, is still running a lot of their training on clouds. And so now you can get at AMD on the cloud and kick the tires and run your proof of concept and get that confidence with our Rockham software stack uh, very, very easily at the cloud. But you're absolutely right. As you start um, uh, deploying an enterprise, uh, you're often uh, it's not going to be like a greenfield new data center like you see the hyperscales uh, able right. to uh, adopt, and so they can accommodate more power because you get more AI efficiency. If you have legacy data centers, uh, you know, then uh, you're going to be uh, actually have power constraints per you know, uh, square foot of your, of your data center. And so we're, we're very focused on that going forward. But we're going in the right order. We're going in the right order, as you heard today, a first getting the entire developer ecosystem out there. First, uh, ensuring that we have the ISVs on board. Yeah. And the analogy I'll make to you is, is look at our Epic CPU ramp, where you know, we, we, we did the same thing. We started out uh, really uh, working with the enterprise, understanding the applications that they were running, getting them certified, and then we took the enterprise ramp. Uh, we're actually accelerating that play we ran on our server market, uh, and we're, we're full bore focused on that uh, right now. Uh, on our GPU products. Yeah. So, Mark, uh, we saw rack scale uh, solutions delivered, mm -hmm. uh, CPU, GPU, networking, scale up, uh, scale out, uh, networking, uh, yeah. pretty exciting. Uh, how are you thinking uh, about this and uh, why are you doing this for, why are you building these? Yeah. Pat, uh, it, it's a necessity right now. When you look at uh, what you need, if, you, if you're committed to bringing competition as we are, <laughs> Uh, then, uh, and, and the competition of where the innovation is going on yeah. and the edge of AI is with the largest of LLMs. It's in that race for AGI. And we're committed that there's competition in that race. It's expensive. Yes. But what we get out of it is we have a seat at the table to understand where the newest algorithms are going. Uh, and, and so to, to compete there, we made the investment uh, in its rack scale design. Mm -hmm. And so that's what drove the right. acquisition of ZT Systems. Uh, the Helios design that we shared uh, today, it's a marvel. I grew up at IBM. I did, yeah. you know, how many, you know, massive computers at IBM. And I feel like I'm actually back to the future. <sighs> right. Uh, and, and looking at, uh, because that's the way we're designing. Like I did early in yeah. my career, where we started the system. And we figured out how to optimize to be able to get big compute done. Yeah. But at AMD, we're doing it in a modular fashion. So when we develop that technology, we can then take it down market uh, and be able to have that absolute uh, yeah. you know, optimization for the cutting edge AI, uh, but bring it into different form factors and lower power. Yeah. And I know that um, the analogy of mainframe may or may not be cool, but in some ways, you sort of want to build the mainframe of the AI era. It mm -hmm. kind of is that because like, Scale up. well, yeah, and think like 60 years of being kind of run, every transaction of importance in the world still runs on those things. That's and right. so, you know, building that kind of system that becomes the epicenter of the world and you've got to really optimize that thing to be, you know, reliable, scalable, mm -hmm. um, secure, all the exactly. things that have to be done. And of course, uh, have software, a common language that everybody that's involved can use. Let's, uh, yeah, um, let's kind of close this off, Mark, really quickly and just say in the kind of a quick summary of how do you def characterize AMD's AI strategy, uh, you know, from data center to edge mm -hmm. at this time? So one of the, the things that I would really highlight to you when you think about our uh, AI strategy is that although all the news now is on, you know, the, the, the massive compute of GPUs and, 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 you know, the huge training and inference that's associated with it, we take the long view of our AI strategy. Uh, as you fast forward and, you know, people running AI on most any application of their work in their daily lives, uh, that's how we've targeted our strategy. So we have made sure that all of the advancements that we do for, uh, you know, for the most demanding AI 
uh, that we have with one software stack for AI that we have across our entire portfolio. CPUs and uh, our, our what we call APUs where we've combined the CPU, GPU and the neural processing unit uh, and our adaptive compute and our GPUs uh, for, uh, for even for consumer graphics. All of that will be under the same software, the same Rockham software umbrella that you see running our large scale data center GPUs. So our strategy is simply AI everywhere and a portfolio uh, to support yeah. the breadth and range of the, of the uh, inference applications that are coming. Right. Mark Papermaster, thank you so much for joining us here. Daniel and Pat, thanks for having me. You got it, thanks. Yeah. And thank you everybody for being part of this 6.5 on the road. We are here in San Jose, California at AMD's Advancing AI 2025. Check out all the other coverage we had here at the event and subscribe and be part of our community. But for this episode, it's time to say goodbye. We'll see you all later.